Welcome to the channel and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to update Xplane. Of course, it's very simple. Just going to tick the box and let the installer do the rest, right? No, keep watching and I'll explain why. I want you to pause the video and start copying your Xplane folder. Now I'm copying mine to the same drive where I have XP installed, but you could use a different internal drive or even an external drive. Just make sure you've got enough disk space. My copy took around an hour and needs 250 gig. Now go ahead and unpause the video. When your copy is finished, verify the sizes are the same. Let's go one step further by putting a simple text file in the root folder of each installation describing the installation's purpose. So for example, this one is my prod and this one is my beta. Now, why do we even need a copy? Because it takes forever, right? Well, the best bit of IT ammunition is having a copy before something changed. I really can't tell you how many times it saved my posterior in my former IT role by having a copy of something before it changed. How is that IT role going now? Oh, fabulous. I see so many forum posts where folk are so eager to click the new checkbox and it might be called something like, click me, I'm new, and you have no idea what damage I can do to your system. The enthusiasm is great for new, but I doubt there's any thought gone into planning what you'll do if it screws your installation. This is why we've taken a copy, folks. So you want to revert back? Now, something is not quite right having clicked, click me and I'm new, and you've no idea what damage I can do to your installation. So this is where you're now ahead of the game and you can quickly revert to a working installation. So rename your beta copy as shown and rename your copy back to its original name. And how about if you want to run the non-beta copy? Well, if you want to do that, rename your beta copy as shown and rename your copy back to its original name. And the reason why I take this approach is some add-ons have the path of their explain folder configured in them, such as what do we do every month to update our nav data? That's a program that's got the explain path folder coded in there for each add-on. So by keeping it the same name, we don't upset that add-on in that case, and we're not going to upset any other add-ons. Oh, right, yeah. And the announcement comes, the beta run is over, the final version is available. <laughs> Never update your beta to live. What version are we going to update? Well, you're going to rename your beta as shown, and you're going to rename the first copy you took back to its original name. And what we're going to do is fire up the updater and we're going to update the non-beta version. Now when X-Plane 12 released and it was still in beta, I took the same approach. When it became the first stable version, I parked beta and did a clean installation of 12.0. And as each beta was released, I've been doing what I'm showing here. And therefore my main installation is as pure as the driven snow. We're not saying beta software is bad, go grab it and have some fun. But the authors call it beta as a warning to you. It could crap out. It can only be attributable to human error. So I'm very confident that you'll benefit from the method that I show you here because it's aimed at improving the reliability of your installation and gives you a very quick way of reverting back. Now one downside with quality, and it's the same as if you're talking about a quality product from the shop versus one that's half price, you buy cheap, you buy twice. So the same here, slight overhead. If you've changed anything during the beta run, such as you've installed any add-ons, liveries, or made a change to your x settings, you're just going to need to repeat that. So what I suggest and what I do during the beta run is just have a list of anything that I changed. That's it. You know the rest. Like, subscribe. Thank you and bye-bye.